Good evening to all. I welcome and it's a pleasure to have another webinar on uh, a topic which is very close to my heart. A topic which I always cherish to talk about. A topic which I feel needs to be spread and create an aware. So <clears throat> let's uh, wait for more participants to participate and then we will talk on today's topic that how do we actually choose a career rather than forcing ourselves and our minds to the relevant topics that is just there in our society prevailing. You know, it quite becomes difficult when um, you are unable to talk in front of an audience because here you can't see your audience. It's, it becomes more like a monologue. And for any speaker, it's very important to gauge what my audience is actually looking for, how my audience is participating because it is a speaker who understands the mindset of an audience that what exactly they are looking for and for what they have come. So, you know, I can see there are people who are coming in and probably they will put questions, put forth many things. So I'm, I'm giving another, waiting for another minute or so where I can see if uh, more participants can participate and just give their background of uh, you know what they are from with school or the other counselors or the teachers or kids of which class so it will be easier for us who are managing from background and for me to analyze what exactly they would like to listen Meanwhile, uh, so the people who have logged in must be thinking that uh, or must have had a, made up their mind what they would like to know or they already know what they would like to give to their kids or tell their kids to choose as a career. How many parents knows that what they would like their son or daughter to be? Any parent who already knows that they would like their child to be engineer or to be a doctor or anything else, maybe a management grad, a student. Okay. You know, so before we start off of today's session you know let me remind you a story a story of uh, everybody must have heard of Alice in the Wonderland how many have read that story Alice in the Wonderland they can simply say yes or no whosoever is participating that uh, have you read Alice in the Wonderland or not because I'll be talking a little bit from Alice in the Wonderland a snippet of that which will help in uh, knowing what directions we are heading towards or not. Anybody who has read Alice in the Wonderland book?
Okay. So, you know, one day Alice was roaming around the jungle and uh, she was caught up in a position, you know, that was basically a fork. Fork means a chora. And she was in a dilemma where to go ahead because she forgot which route she has to take. So there was a Cheshire cat who was sitting and the Cheshire cat told Alice what happened? Where do you want to go? Alice said, I don't know. I really don't know where I would like to go ahead. So cat said, fine, if you don't know, you choose wherever you want to go. Take a chance. Now, you need to interpret this in a different way. That career is a choice, is not a chance. So when we say that career is a choice, not a chance, so that means we should be able to decide from which age. That's very important. And how do we gauge that what career is suitable for us or not depends on certain criteria. And those criteria are relevant from previous years to the modern era. Those criteria are still carrying on. What are these criteria? You know, these criteria are basically based on our aptitude, based on our personality, based on our interest. Now, what is an aptitude? Anybody has an idea what is an aptitude? An aptitude is an ability to do something. You know, so we see in various sets of students that they have a good ability in cracking maths paper or they have a good ability in drawing. Why everybody else do not have that ability? So you need to understand, one needs to understand that everybody can't be same with same aptitude. Every student, every child is different, having a different aptitude altogether. Then we need to understand our personality. Every human being, every single student has a different personality. And how do we gauge that? We gauge that whether that person personality is an introvert or an extrovert. So when we say introvert or extrovert, it depends. Do we like to mix up with people or we don't like to mix up with people? You know, these are certain personality traits. A personality trait also envisages that what we like to eat whether we have a temperament, whether I get angry early or whether I'm a short tempered. So, you know, these are all kind of traits which help us even in knowing that, okay, fine, after choosing a career, what kind of profession level I should go. Then comes the interest. The interest is something which fluctuates. Because I have an interest in watching a cartoon. Second day, I might not have the same interest. So as we say that, you know, I have an interest or, you know, sometimes what we do, we try to link hobbies and try to map it as we would like to make it as a career. But are we actually doing a justice toward it or not? That needs to be understood. In our society, the most important environment depends and we are governed by the environment 
and how are that we are governed by the environment. I think most of you would agree with me. It is not as a student I take a decision. As a whole, it is the society which also helps me in taking the decision. And what are those signs? And you know, I typically call them as pressures. I don't call them as a signs. So these environment has certain pressures around us. The first pressure has been created by nobody else. It is the parents. And every day you will hear one thing or the other. Kya? Apne Mosa ji ke bete ko dekho. Apne chachi ki beti ko dekho. Apne cousin ko dekho. Aaj wo kya kar raha hai? Aaj tum kya kar raha hai? So there's always some kind of differentiation going on. A comparison which is going on. Then comes the environment. Now, what is an environment pressure? Environment is nothing to do with the surroundings or you know from the temperature or something like that. It is we try to follow, we work, we we go as a herd, we work on a herd. Okay. So if technology jada prevalent hai, so everybody moves into that direction. Agar aaj, fashion is a trend so then people will follow that trend but one has to understand kya wo capability or capacity hai mere paas? can i do that course or not or is it just i have to do it then you have a peer pressure what is peer pressure it is the friend pressure now who chooses the friend now here I differ, here the parents are not helping you out. It is as a student, you are choosing your own friends. So what happens? Normally, you know, if I'm friend is taking up a tuition with a different coaching institute, I will also follow that. And it happens. In majority of cases, it happens. You know, if you see coaching institutes, we follow them. Now you see students, lack of lack of students are studying and preparing for engineering. And how many seats are there? We never assume or presume that or never even we don't think that yes, we have to see that how many students are sitting for the paper, how many seats are available. And do and first of all, do we have, do I have that essence of cracking it or not? Now everybody says that I want to get into IIT. Can everybody become an IIT? Ask yourself. Everybody says that I want to do a management program from best of the best colleges. But how many seats are there? Has anybody thought of? And that's one of the reasons why there are so many colleges which have mushroomed in so many years. Because of one thing, it is not because of the demand of the program. It is because the supply of students is humongous. So normally what happens? So when we try to choose a career, so basically, it is like this, how do we diagnose it? The question is how? Everybody says that, okay, beta, you should choose science. If you have good marks in the 10th, you science. Le it is the cream subject. 90% or 80% above in 10th means you should take up science. If less than 80%, fine, take up commerce. And if it's less than that, then it's one stream. Basta hai, that is arts. But, even a student who scored 90 and above, have we ever asked that particular student whether he or she is interested in science or is he or she interested in something else? 
Now, when we talk of interest, it is not related with your hobby. So probably you must be playing guitar. But have you ever thought that can this end up getting you into a certification and also end up getting you a career? So you need to enhance that practice. Now, what we people do instead, we try and meet all the counselors who can help us out and they will suggest us various ways. One of the way of judging of taking up a stream after completing my 10th exams is maybe I can set up for a psychometric test or a DMIT testing. So these tests basically help us in analyzing engaging to know our traits to know our aptitude so you have aptitude test you have personality test you have interest test so based on that permutation combination the counselors suggest you that yes you can choose these kind of courses which are good for you it's a suggestion but it is up to you how you decide, how you take up that suggestion. Because you yourself know what is good for you. If I know that yes, I am a good speaker. If I know that I can communicate with people in any gathering, in any topic, then is it necessary that I need to choose engineering for that? No, I can be a public speaker. I can get into mass communication. So these are the ways we have to understand, we have to analyze things. Second, while choosing a career, after mapping my entire DNA, that is, after getting the aptitude, personality and interest, we come up with certain number of students. One, we see that a student is scientifically oriented. What that means, that simply means that this student likes to study, do research, and the aptitude is more logical and analytical. So these kind of students, normally you will see have a habit of doing lots of experiments. They would be good in mathematics. They will be good in certain skills. Then there are a certain number of students who fall into category of that they are highly academically oriented. So when I say academically oriented, they would like to study in depth. They would like to gauge knowledge. They'll try to, you know, study literature, try to get the insight why it happened. They would like to probe. Then there are certain number of students who are very physically conscious. They prefer to get into field of Navy, Army, sports person, so like this. Now, what you need to understand is that after analyzing all these things about your personality traits, now comes up what are the careers available. So, you know, you can Google, there are lots of careers available after class 12. And these careers also help me getting a prospective job or to do my further studies. But one student, as a student, one needs to ask himself or herself that is she looking for a career which will help into choosing a job or which will help in making others livelihood. These are the questions a student needs to ask before choosing any kind of a career. Normally, we have certain set of careers. Dominantly, like we say for science, it is engineer, engineering or medical. But there are other courses also which a science student can offer. A science student not necessarily needs that he has to offer engineering or medical. They can also offer paramedical programs. A science student can also go 
and choose and become a psychologist. She can also become a philosopher. So there are various things. So you cannot think that a career what you have chosen would lead you to a different direction in profession. Because otherwise, it wouldn't have happened that many of the engineers who are coming out or passing out are working in manufacturing unit or an IT unit. You will find lots of engineers working in financial institutions, maybe as a marketer or maybe as a seller selling insurance, selling financial tools to customers. So my question is, if supposedly I have to study engineering or I have studied engineering, then why do I need to sell financial products? Haven't I developed that kind of skill within me which will harness my career path? So supposedly if I'm a mechanical engineer, I studied four years of my engineering and after doing that and then you know doing a post graduation and then I've landed up into a banking job or a financial institution job. How relevant it is. So you see there's a huge gap. Any questions so far if they have they can ask. So it is important that anybody, any student who's choosing should first ask himself or herself what is good for him or her instead of listening to others, instead of listening to even the parents or to the peer. I have that potential. I have no, I know that, you know, I, I draw very good. I have that power of sketching. And if I know, then, you know, I have a path. Let me be a student of science, commerce or arts. For design program, it is not necessary that I need to be an art. I need to take an art. But as a subject. Even being a science student, I can sit for fashion designing or a product development program or a product designing, communication designing, because people don't understand there are various specializations available in fashion and even in arts. Uh, Devachana, you have a question. What are the careers of future for employability perspective? See, this is a very, uh, uh, what should I say, Devachana, it's a very uh, problematic question. We really don't know what kind of future do we have. And our programs, you know, the studies, what we are studying is not related to the employability. There's a huge gap between the employability, the students who are employable from different colleges and what colleges are teaching. But yes, seeing the trend we normally say to be on a safer side, you should choose programs or courses of studies which have a demand or which will have a demand. Now, for example, industries like FMCG, industries like IT, they will be there. They are watching specifically with the current situation. If you see everything has now come down to online. Nobody thought that such kind of pandemic will come or rather, you know, we as a citizen of India will come and have to study or have to teach through online platform because everybody knew till date that offline is the best option. Like we all go to market, purchase things, but now the time has changed. Everything is online. So, you know, I would like a student should develop a skill. Skills are not taught in school levels. That's the problem. 
Now we say that if we are, want to learn AI as a subject, artificial intelligence or data analytics, then why don't we start teaching it from the school days? So we need to enhance the skills. Until and unless we do not enhance the skills, we cannot choose or help into employability or getting into any sector. Now, for example, if I want to work in Hindustan levers, or anybody who wants to work in an FMCG company, so they need to have a skill of selling. They need to have a flair of talking. They need to get the hang of a language because people who work in an FMCG industry, they don't have to go and sell to the corporates. They sell it to the retailers. And who are these retailers? These are the Kirana shops. And where are these Kirana shops? These Kirana shops are in the areas which are into urban, semi-urban, rural. And India is a diverse society. So one has to have a, know the languages. So we need to teach our children different languages. But instead, what we are teaching, we tell our students to learn languages like German. We tell them to learn languages like Spanish or Chinese. But do we tell our children to learn languages if they are working in India? That if you work in South, you should know the language, the regional language. So it is important that we should encourage our kids in learning languages and in developing their skills. Uh, Devajana enhancing skills or internship. Now see, that's the problem. In our education domain, the schools have not yet adapted the theory of internship, the theory of skill setting. It is we as a parent who has to look out and see different avenues where we can put our kids. Now, for example, if I want to enhance the skills in IT, in computer related, then I think, you know, we have options where we can send our kids to an IIT for short term programs, you know, short term certificate programs. We have AppTech. Now, for example, if somebody wants to get a hang of graphics, media, digital, they can go into learn short term programs. They don't have to choose a career, but these are the skills which will help them out. You know, that's why these latest apps comes up every day in the market. Nobody thought that TikTok will become a famous app, but it became a famous app. And now many people using this TikTok and earning a good livelihood. So it is important as a parent that we should help our kids with setting the skills because knowledge is available. You know, we can see even we have courses which are offered online. So one can study, get certification, but there are certain programs which needs a hang, which actually needs a hang in practicality. So I would encourage all parents that during this time or even not, let the kids learn something, something which is not related to the studies, something different, even if they are learning musical instrument, even if they are learning dance, it is good. These are skills because it will help them out when they choose and when they go for a professional path because it creates an aura within themselves. Any other questions, anybody who has? Uh, before entering into college, Devajana, they can also do some kind of internship with NGOs. You know, it is it will help them out if they want to plan to go abroad colleges because when you fill the form for abroad colleges, 
they like to see whether a student has done some kind of community work or not. So community internship is really essential. I suggest every student, whether they're in class 11th or 10th or 9th or 12th, they should participate in community work, community culture, because this will help them out. Now, secondly, you know, when we say that uh, I have a good flair of communication or I know I can be a good debater, then there are different courses available. Again, for that, it's not matter that, you know, you need to be a commerce student or an art student or a science student. So stream is different while choosing a career. You know, we have exams like law, we have colleges like law. It's a career. So somebody who wants to become a lawyer, irrespective whether that he comes from science, commerce or arts, he has to know only one art. And what is that art? Can anybody tell me those who are listening to this session to become a lawyer? What is the art required? For becoming a lawyer, anybody, what kind of art is required in a student? You know, the most important, <clears throat> It's, you need to be a good debater. You need to have a good analytical skills and you need to have patience. If you have these three traits, then law is a very good profession. If you know how to draft, that is, you know, how to shorten the things. You have a good flair of writing. It is a good career path. Because lawyers in today's date, whether a corporate or whether working in courts, they come into different categories. And if you are able to establish yourself whether with a law firm or with the corporates, you can do wonders in this field. So similarly, it goes well with those students who are engineers, who have done the engineering. If every field you have to make your name, if you do not make your name, you will not rise in your career. So rising in your career means that yes, along with your skills you have to improvise your communication power also how many people or how many students hesitate in asking questions even today and this hesitation is not only with students it is with us also we also sometimes hesitate in asking questions do you know why do we hesitate? What is the reason that we hesitate? Anybody who can tell me that why do we hesitate? See, it helps me if, if you ask question, if you answer, then you know, I, I know that, okay, fine. I can uh, <clears throat> give a light on that, I can throw a light. So why do we hesitate? Okay, fine. So, you know, Normally what happens, you know, we feel that if I ask a question, I don't know what the other person will think. 
about me. You know, as a student, as a child, it always happens in a classroom that there are a certain number of students who are favorite students of a teacher. But for teacher, all students are favorite. But there are certain number of students who will always ask, and there are certain number of students who will always keep quiet. Even if they have questions in their mind, they will not ask. The reason is very simple. And the reason is what? Is that the other person might feel that I'm a fool, that I don't know even this, and I'm still asking. That's wrong. That thinking is wrong. You know, the question which you have, it might be not relevant for the others. They might be knowing it, but for you it is relevant because you do not know. And probably your question might not also not be known to others. So do not hesitate. Always try to ask questions, always try to pose, because more questions you pose, more answers you get. And when you get more answers, more clarification happens. Otherwise, teacher ne paraya, mere samaj mein aaya ki nahi aaya, mujhe nahi pata. Kyunki maine to koi sawal poochha hi nahi. Aur jab tak mein koi sawal na poochhu, to clarification kaise hoga? And normally what ends up, is that we go back and we ask our friends the same question what we did not ask probably that friend of yours is having the same question so this is what as a student you should always ask and teachers are the greatest tool you have right now who are helping you out and who will always help you in solving your problems fourth important thing that after 12th whatever courses or career you choose whether engineering whether medical whether say any professional careers which are like law mass communication hotel management nda they are all entrance based examinations they are not related to your what you studied in your class 11th and 12th when i'm specifically talking about professional careers like law management okay what they ask they have certain like for example in law they normally ask papers based on general knowledge paper based on verbal ability paper based on quantitative and Lastly, they also ask paper based on legal aptitude. They will not ask you what you have studied in class 11 or class 12. Now, what they ask in quantitative is what you have studied from class 3 onwards till class 8. Now you see, they are asking questions based on unitary method. They will be asking questions based on algebra. They will ask questions based on cost profit, on permutations and communication uh, combinations. Now, being a student of class 11th or 12th, I might have forgotten of my past mathematical riches. But all of a sudden, when I prepare for the entrance examinations, I have to redo that. So you need to understand what subjects we are going to choose in terms of careers, in terms of the entrance examinations, doesn't depend on what I have studied in my class 11th and 12th. As a student, I need to develop a habit, a regular habit of reading newspapers. How many students or how many parents get have a habit of reading newspaper you need to be honest to yourself do kids read newspapers every day and if they read newspapers what are those contents or what are those pages they are reading 
any idea anybody who is again my question is to the audience do you do you know what areas or what paper your kids are reading what sections they are reading can you throw up a light okay so uh normally when you prepare for these entrance examinations you should read newspapers like times of india hindustan times economic times financial times and you should be thorough with your current affairs with sports with business page because questions can be asked on sensex so all these things you need to inculcate as a habit of reading newspapers daily no questions will come from bollywood so if you read delhi times or hd city it is of no use nobody will be asking question on ki friday ko kaun sa cinema lagega but yes there might be a section of question that which film crossed 500 crores turnover so you need to read the business pages what is the turnover of rai who has recently merged or have taken a stake with reliance industry if i don't read such things and it's not only reading i need to make a habit of cutting those headlines and creating a scrapbook how many students create or maintain a scrapbook where you can actually keep all your cuttings and go through daily so that's very important secondly we tend to say that you know you should study 8 hours 10 hours no please study for 2 to 3 hours not more than that but while studying those 2 to 3 hours there should not be any disturbance now what i mean by disturbance any idea anybody who can say me what are those disturbances i'm talking about So normally these disturbances are doorbell ring, phones, the ringing of bell. So one should not get distracted because the moment you get distracted, your mind changes, your mind turns. So what you have, what you think, what you have studied, is there within you? No, it is not. So during those two to three hours, it is you and it is the book. that's all you can't get up from the seat you have to concentrate this concentration level is most important that's why you really need to ask questions to yourself why i am scoring less and my other partner is scoring good what is the difference am i eating something less or is he eating something different that's why he's scoring no you need to ask what is the difference and you will find that what things they are doing probably you are not doing that you are doing things in a different way devachana you have a questions what about different streams which are still more in demand science see devachana streams like science commerce and humanities they are all in demand see right now we have not introduced a combo of this and see there are schools so you need to understand we have cbsc curriculum we have an ib curriculum now if a student studies from ib background they have a different set of curriculum there they have a mixed curriculum so a student of science 
can study history also. But whereas a student of CBSC, if he has taken science, it means he has to study physics, chemistry, maths, or biology, or computers, or economics. Anything, whether it is commerce or humanities, they're all good. So after arts, you can sit for all these entrance examinations. You know, mass communication for that matter of fact. If I want to sit for journalism, it hardly matters whether I've studied science or I've studied commerce. Because for journalism, if I'm not good in my communication, in my writing skills, in my verbal skills, then probably I'll not be doing a justice of doing this course. Secondly, courses like, you know, you have nowadays you have radio job, you become a radio anchor or TV anchor or a news reader. So for these, you don't need to be a science, commerce or arts. You have practical training for them. You need to be presentable. So grooming is very essential. And this grooming is done from day one. So, in to, so, the, so there are no different streams. In our society, in our CBSC curriculum, it is science, commerce, and humanities. So it is not necessary that if my son or daughter scores 95% and above, should be taking science. Ask your son or daughter, or you know what is good for them. Because if they are not good in, see, because CBSC marks are totally different. You will come to know what school gives as a mark. You will see there's a huge difference when a school gives a mark as compared to CBSC marks. Because I have seen and witnessed that same student getting a 50 in school might end up getting 80 in CBSC marking. And I do not give a weightage to CBSC marking, first of all, because I feel how a student can score 100 out of 100 in English, how a student can score 100 out of 100 in history. So the marking scheme, the marking pattern is quite different what the CBSC follows. But I myself know that whether I'm good in history or not. So if I'm good in reading, please choose that kind of subject. See, a subject to be chosen by any kid should be of his own liking. Because once, if it is his own liking, then I can assure you one thing. There is one industry which is growing like anything. And that industry is growing starts with T, it is tuition. Now every day, every household, starting from class one, you will find students are being sent for tuitions. Is it necessary? Is it required? If my kid is going to a school, where he or she is learning from the teachers, is it necessary that he has to learn more things? And we have an answer for this. We say, no, if I send my kid to a tuition center, they learn more. I really don't know what they learn or not learn. So there is no, you. it's a debatable. You know, we send our kids to study for engineering entrance examinations, you know, like Akash, Pidji and others. Is it really necessary? I nowadays, you know, you know, people should forgive me, but nowadays we see that uh, ads coming in news news channels and TV. Ellen says that please join in our online classes. So I ask parents if online classes are available, then is it necessary that I need to send my kid from Delhi? to quota what's the difference then? why people did not thought of having an online class rather than getting students from one state to another state 
So Devajan, I hope uh, your query has been solved. See, uh, one thing more, yes, science is always in demand. So if you talk of demand, we I don't say science is always in a demand, but yes, if, if I'm a science student, then my path are widely open. If I'm commerce student, it is still open. What is the restriction? A commerce student cannot be an engineer or a doctor. That's the difference. A science student can be a management graduate, can be can fit anywhere. So science can be fitted anywhere. That's the thing. That's the difference. Now, even to sit for ND entrance examinations, you need to have physics, you need to have maths as a subject. So maths is very important. Any other questions people have in their mind? Okay, now as a student, one has to be work in a very smart way. Hard working is definitely there, but you have to work in a very smart way. Now, what is the smart way? It is how you prioritize your timings. Time management is very important. So you need to map your timings, how much time you would like to devote. And when you devote that much time, you should be devoting fully without any disturbance. And I would encourage everybody that please do join classes related to skills enhancement, whether any instrument or whether music or dance or creative, please do, it will help you out or related to computers or gaming. I think every student has a passion of gaming and you can do wonders. So these are the things which will really help in coming years. You see in such kind of a pandemic situation where loads and loads of people are being unemployed. If you're practically having the skills, probably you can have run your own business. That's what I'm trying to say. You need to enhance your skills. Any questions anybody else they have in their mind, they can ask. If anybody wants to know more or wants to get their uh, <coughs> testing in terms of psychometric, in terms of DMIT, they can get in touch with us. They can visit the website of Riches Multi Services, put their queries, and uh, they will get back to you. So it's very important that you should not fall into traps that this is good or oh, that is good for me. Ask yourself what is good for you and then seek solutions that how to get into it. Our next uh, live session will be on what kind of colleges one should choose, whether one should choose government or private we will be discussing on that and that's a relevant topic how do i choose a university or a college how do i differentiate between a university and a college okay so i'm ending up here because i don't see many questions coming forward so those people who would be interested, they can log on on 15th May, where we'll have a session on 
how do we choose the college because many students who would have given their 12th examinations will not be filling up forms for different different colleges both private as well as government thank you